Hello and welcome to Rising Stars. I'm Vikram Oza. Now, while online shopping is turning out to be quite a boon for uh, premium personal care brands, the beauty business has been showing greater traction online and offline, I should say, because uh, take the LVMH-owned Sephora brand, which started out being a 12 crore brand in India in the year 2015. Today, their business is worth 100 crores here. So it's run by Arvind Brands, of course, and there are many examples. In the startup space, of course, there is Just Herbs, which is... Uh, uh, one that came up as an e-store in late 2013. It has set out on a retail journey now with a maiden company-owned outlet in Chandigarh. Arush Chopra is the CEO of the brand and he's joining us in our Mumbai studio. It's great to have you with us, Arush. So Hi, you're doing bro. the reverse over yes. here, right, yes. Arush? Because uh, most uh, of them, they start out uh, with a retail thing and then they kind of move into the uh, e-commerce space. But uh, you're doing quite the reverse. So what yes. prompted this? Because I understand this was a family-owned contract manufacturing business that right. uh, you're turning around now that you're here with an investment banking background. Yeah. Thank you so much, Vikram, for having me, first of all. And I think uh, our journey has been that, uh, you know, the time in 2013 that I moved back to really do this, uh, you know, we, I, we had three or four options in front of us, mm -hmm. you know, and in India, there's everybody to advise you. And as a young entrepreneur, there are always people to advise you do this and don't do that. So there were options like going the regular retail model, the distribution, distributor model and supply to pharmacies. There was a model that supply to hotels, to salons. Yeah. And there was another thing, you know, let's do it online. And this was a time when, you know, a website was mainly an afterthought. Sure. You know, we'd, we have stores everywhere, now let's just also have a website. But when you do look at the, you know, the, the uh, a quick uh, blended ROI analysis of all these channels, I mean, online trumps all other channels. Correct. So it was only natural for us to start doing this first. Especially for new brands, right? For new brands. Yeah. So we were basically the, uh, you know, now there's many uh, online driven or online first, if you call them brands out there, but mm -hmm. we were among the first ones in India to do this. Okay. And like I was, you know, just mentioning uh, before the show is that, you know, I myself used to have questions sometimes that whether is somebody going to actually buy a face cream online or not. Correct. But because now, it's such a personal thing and obviously yeah. people have different skin types and people are yeah. uh, scared to use certain products on skin. Absolutely. Right? But here you are in the Ayurvedic uh, beauty business and there are uh, many other brands within that space. It's very competitive. You have your uh, Karma, you have Forest Essentials, established brands who mm -hmm. pumped in a lot of money into marketing as well. Uh, Nika in recent times, Akadi as well. So, I mean, mm -hmm. within the price brackets uh, that uh, one can imagine in the beauty business, there are plenty and those spaces are taken. Yes. You're saying that there is a wider market out yes. there for uh, what you bring to the table. Yes, absolutely. I think uh, it's, a, it's a very big market out there and you have to identify your particular niche. And what Just Herbs really brings to the table is three things. Safety, honesty, Safety and effectiveness. Safety, what I mean is if there is a controversy around an ingredient, we will not use it. Okay, honesty is the full ingredient list is on the label. We're not the, we're not the brand which basically says this has neem, chandan, and you know, uh, what have you, and lotion base, cream right. base, which is 93% of the product. Sure. So a customer can pick up anything with their eyes closed. And the third thing is that the products are not fragrance driven. Mm -hmm. They actually do something. So if you look at the product list, you'll find particular um, items for blemishes, particular items for hair fall and for other issues. Like Post-pregnancy blemishes, for example, is one concern we get a lot. Right. And we take a consultative approach to selling. So you can sit at home and just type a little message on WhatsApp and there'll be a consultant uh, willing to help you with your skin concerns. You can send her pictures. She'll uh, formulate a full regime for you and deliver the products so to your So there's a lot of step. crowdsourcing that you're doing when it comes to uh, the kind of SKUs that you're building as well. Yeah. Um, th how much has that helped the business uh, to kind of stay ahead of the curve? Because yeah. I'm trying to understand the market that you cater to. Yeah. Have you been able to identify it Absolutely. and say that this is uh, mm -hmm. our part of the market that we are going to cater to? Yeah. So basically, our part of the market is a customer, is a customer who basically, number one, cares about what goes on to their skin. And secondly, we are very close to the customer as well. So to give you an example, we have recently launched India's first crowdsourced beauty product, which is midway between skincare and makeup. Right. It's called the Herb and Rich Skin Tint. It is a 99.3% natural foundation, which I would say the cohort, the, the other brands in the space, nobody has sort of tread on this territory yet, mm -hmm. you know, tending towards makeup. Makeup. And the idea for this came through our customers. Right. So we basically crowdsourced the idea. We conducted Facebook polls where we asked them, what is the new product that we should develop? And the feedback we got was, I need something which doesn't kick up on my face. Right. Like I, I go to work every day. I don't want to use a foundation because that makes me sweat a lot. I need something light, mm -hmm. natural at the same time, which gives me a no makeup look. Right. So then we got to work and we made prototypes, which we you know distributed across India, got feedback again online, right. improved on those prototypes, did 
did a second round of sampling, and then finally, after three to four months, we actually launched that product. That's excellent. But uh, you know, beauty and skincare have been thought of as two different verticals, perhaps mm -hmm. because uh, the margins are high, right? Over here, that you're talking about, at least like a 40% margin is what you're going to have, especially in the beauty side of things. Uh, mm -hmm. So to be able to get these different uh, SKUs out, to have these different products out in the market, to keep uh, uh, killing some SKUs and creating new ones as well, all of that, that churn is important as part of the business. Absolutely. So then when you're merging and creating these new products, uh, I'm just wondering whether you're creating a new market or it already exists or people are getting that much more experimental because I understand a large part of your clientele is women. Yes, uh, I think it's a mix of both. I think in some cases we are creating new markets. In some cases we are answering, uh, basically we are catering to needs that weren't met earlier. Right. What I mean is that in the beauty industry, the big companies have always taken a top-down approach to launching new products. Products, you know, so uh, we bring in an exotic ingredient from somewhere, and when, then we spend a lot on advertising and make you believe that this is great for you, mm -hmm. and that's it. But how about asking the customer that, you know, what is your peculiar problem? Like if my hair is like, you know, my scalp is oily, but my ends are dry. Do you have like a particular product for that? So that type of customer with that very peculiar uh, beauty needs feels very alienated. There is nothing for that. There's nothing for her on the regular supermarket aisle. Yes, but mm. I understand. But how much customization can you actually do when you're trying to create a mass brand? I understand you're trying to reach out to audiences in US mm. and UK mm. through the shopping channels, all of which is huge marketing burn right now. Mm. Uh, there is there are limited resources at your yes. disposal because you've been bootstrapping all along. Uh, this was uh, a business that your parents set up as an mm -hmm. OEM business, but now you're kind of creating a brand out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but as uh, you kind of grow this, there are going to be needs for uh, larger funds. Uh, mm -hmm. What's the plan on that front? How well are you funded right now mm -hmm. to be able to expand and create new outlets? Because I understand you want to own each of these outlets yes. right now. Yes. So the idea is to basically add outlets across the country, and but be very careful around that. They're not going to be very big outlets. Outlets, okay, and it's going to supplement the online experience. So think of it as omni-channel. Uh, that concept itself is evolving as we speak, but but the point is that's what we have in mind. Mm -hmm. And yes, funds will be required, but I think in the near term, I think we are capitalized to sort of do it ourselves. And the reason we've chosen markets like Chandigarh, Ludhiana, the smaller but sort of upcoming cities, is because they're great test markets to try out things. And you know, then we will sort of roll roll this concept out into the bigger cities as well. That is that is where the that is what the thought is, and do more of what we're doing exist, you know, currently, which is the online business. We want to do much more around that. All right. So, I mean, both these pieces are obviously going to move together, and yes. there is a considerable potential in both, as you pointed out yourself. Mm -hmm. But this means that you've got to scale and make sure that you are uh, right size to be yes. able to uh, meet the kind of uh, needs, the monetary needs that you're going to have in the future. Of course, the domestic beauty and personal care market worth eight billion dollars currently, slated to grow at an annual rate of five to six percent over the next few years. Uh, to touch. Ten and a half billion dollars. That's a projection. By 2021, it's going to reach about ten and a half billion dollars. So yes, we see the potential. And Arush, we wish you great luck for the Thank future. Thank you so much, Vikram. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And that's our rising star, Arush Chopra of Just Herbs. There'll be plenty more entrepreneurs in the future. But for the moment, I'm Vikram Boza. Thanks for joining us.